Freezy, you may take your seat. President of the Republic of Uganda and Commander in Chief of the Uganda Armed Forces, Uganda People's Defense Forces, by virtue of the authority entrusted to me by the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and the law governing the defense of Uganda, do hereby commission you to be officers of the Uganda People's Defense Forces at the ranks of captains, lieutenants, and second lieutenants, from this second day of September, 2022 signed this on the 28th day of August 2022. You are seven general, retired, and president. How does the hen bring up its young ones when it has no breasts to feed them? It has got its, its own special way of doing it. And there are some other answers to that. So, the issue is how could NRM manage to build an army like this with the very little resources? If you look at the map of Africa, much of Africa now is in chaos. Marim said, making revolution is like Okugoya of law. Uh -huh. Because with Okugoya millet, you must wait for the water to be at the right temperature. If you do it too early, it will be, it will not work. If you do it too late, it will also not work. So you must get the right moment of, of when to do what. Now, this is what many people don't know. They try to do what should be done tomorrow, they try to do it today. Do things according to the real situation. We don't engage in uh, wishful thinking, we tell the people the truth. You find in some of the places, they can't move because they are waiting for money. Money. But if you don't have money, but you need security, what are you going to do? We are to build an army with no pay. Who was going to pay us? So all that time, what we needed was a gun, the bullets for it, food. 16 years from 1971 to 1986, we were building an army with no pay at all. So we went on with that low pay until three years ago when we, we pushed the, the, the private up to the level of the, of, of the grade three teacher. Now recent, and we, we, did, we did nothing for, we, we did something for the private, but up to captain. 
but we did nothing for the majors and above. But recently, because the original fighters are retiring now, we decided that no, the time has come to pay well the brigadier and above, because many of them are retiring, so that they retire with a smile and improve 50% the major up to, to Kalno. And in the coming years, we are going to, in the coming years, we are going to bring up even the, the private until he gets to a certain level. We are looking at about 1 million shillings per month. That is the target. 1 million or 1.5 million for the private. So therefore, what Mwarimu said, kufanya mapinduzi ni kama kusonga ugari. Okurute, okurete nchuka chuka, kulingo kugoyo obulo. Orno kupima. Obude. Orno tekera. Bajite nsanu muruganda. So that's what the NRM has been doing. So therefore, I'm very happy to be here to pass you out, to commission you. I congratulate the degree officers, cadets, the ones of Bachelor of Defense Studies. Congratulations. For for mixing academia, academic with military. That's very good. I'm happy the Makere teachers are involved. I hope they are not teaching neo-colonial social science. I, I would have to call them and say, what are you teaching our people? I want to con congratulate the specialists, the ones who have now been commissioned, and also congratulate the Air Force cadets. All of you, congratu congratulations. I thank the teachers, and I thank the parents. I was the name of the children. Thank you so much. I've been told that you have done political education, which is very crucial because you must know why you are fight, why you are defending your country. You must know that. Part of the problem in some of these countries, they have got soldiers. Mimi, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they can't even pronounce the word yes. Mimi, yes, yes. Yes, yes of what? For us, NRM says you are Jeshi la wanainchi. You are here to defend the wanainchi, to defend the legitimate interests of the wanainchi against illegitimate interests. I'm glad you have also done military skills. You have got military skills and Army is primarily about fighting. So when you join the army, you must be eager. When there is fighting, you must be eager to go there. Don't, don't, don't be afflicted by the disease of headquarterism. You are in the headquarter, just only dealing with Porsche. And, and, and beans. Okay, thank you very much. You deal with the portion and beans for two years. No, you must go and you yourself should say, no, I find it. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I'm going to go If there is any operation going on, be eager. Not that we enjoy war, but 
We don't avoid it if it comes. So that's what I, I want you to, to have that culture. Don't, don't develop the culture of headquarterism. Just going there with typewriters, with what? Wunga, what? Okay. You can do some Wunga work for some years, but please insist on going in the field if there, is op if there are operations there. Now, as you heard from uh, General Mbadi, we are working on the infrastructure. We shall have to work on this infrastructure. Uh, we have put aside the money for the houses, the, the accommodation. We are, we are beginning to move because now the, the temperature of the water is a bit is quite warm. I think it is the time to put in uh, put in a sano to to make changes. Now, one of the areas I want to encourage the commanders to look at are the economic activities of the spouses. These women are there in the barracks, the women, the women and the husbands, in case your husband is also in the barracks not doing anything, the husband of the soldier or the wife. I have always thought these spouses are a very powerful force. If they are assisted, to do economic activities around the barracks. They, they can, and when, the other time when I made a tour, I created some funds. Please, commanders, follow up those funds. And if they need more money, we can put more money so that they have got their circles. Okay, they, there was a rental circle, but you can also have these spouses having their own, uh, their own effort because they are a big force. We also want to thank you that you have led a government that has revamped the economy. Our retiring generals left with the happy faces, Your Excellency. Because, thank you very much. And they left with a very good package, Your Excellency. We thank you. We know where we came from. We know where this country came from from almost, from negative. And as everybody knows, a strong army like UPDF must have a, a strong supporting economy. And His Excellency has been able to lead this country from the mess in which it was now to uh, what we are seeing today. Dear parents, we are all happy to see a very smart UPDF, especially the cadets in front of us. That is because the president has been able to lead the country into a better economy. We thank you very much, Your Excellency. We are very happy to see all of this. It is there for a continuation of your historical mission to build a strong national force that can secure Uganda and also the region. That's why, Your Excellency, the National Resistance Army and now UPDF has been able to undertake successful Pan-Africanist interventions in the region and beyond. We know we've been to Liberia, we've been to South Sudan, we are now in Somalia, we are in Equatorial Guinea, we are in DRC. A weak force cannot do all those and still keep stability at home. We thank you, Your Excellency, for continuously guiding us to build a very strong force, focusing on your gospel of Pan-Africanism to be spread on the basis of prosperity, strategic security, and the unity of the African people. In addition, Your Excellency, you have always counseled us 
to be extremely disciplined and not to engage in heinous practices since the core foundation of the NAR and the UPDF was and still remains its discipline, which has enabled the army to weather all the storms. What you have learned reaffirms the hope and expectations of our country in developing a professional and modern force that is able and is willing to serve with dedication and loyalty in order to deliver on its mandate, even in a resource-constrained environment. Whereas today is the graduation day, it only marks the beginning of your service career. Therefore, I caution you to observe the ideological consciousness for a soldier, because a soldier without ideological training is a potential criminal. You must therefore understand who you are, our history as a country, what we stand for, and where we are going, and our revolutionary methods of work. Our lecturers from Makere University, I request you to stand up for recognition and maybe you wave to His Excellency. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, sir, the three-year cadet program that began on 26 August 2019, it started with 60 students, 11 students dropped out of the course due to various reasons. There are now 49 officer cadets, and among them, we have four lady cadets. They are ready for commissioning. And thereafter, graduation, which shall be conducted from Makere University. And the professional officer cadet course in Tech 04, short, started on 28th March of the year 2022, with 253 trainees. Five cadets fell off from the course due to various reasons, and today, there are only 248 officer cadets, and among them are, 50, are 38 lady cadets. They have successfully completed the 24 weeks officer cadet course, and they are ready to commission today. Your Excellency, it is now my honor and gratitude to present to you 297 officer cadets altogether, among these cadets, 58 are from the Air Force, 35 from the Special Forces Command, and 204 from the Land Forces, and that's the fulfilling of the tri-service training of the Academy. The, cadet, the cadets have attended and successfully completed their officer cadet course here at the Uganda Military Academy. On this commissioning parade, Your Excellency, they have been joined by eight pilot cadets from the Uganda People's Defense Forces Air Force Headquarters, making a total of 305 officer cadets to commission today here at Uganda Military Academy, Kabamba. <laughs>
Okay. Okay.